The HSBC Women's World Championship, part of the race to the CME Globe. It's not only in the equine sports where bloodlines and pedigree provide the DNA for success. And if confirmation of that was needed, the name Corda will do that for you. Tennis championships at the highest level have carried on from one generation to the next, but now it's mainly in golf where this remarkable family shines. Today in Singapore, 19-year-old Nelly Corda has the opportunity to add to the family's legacy. She takes a one-shot lead into Sunday. And who will be just ahead, striving to take the title from her? Who else but big sister and best friend Jess, still riding high after a Thailand victory a week ago. But this one is not purely a family affair, far from it. Canada's 20-year-old powerhouse Brooke Henderson charged into contention with a sizzling Saturday 65. She and Australia's Minji Lee, already in great form this year, are poised to attack if the sister act hits turbulence. And so is Michelle Wee, who led the field into Sunday 12 months ago. The former US Open champion possesses not only the talent, but the steel required to capture a crown like this. So it's Sunday. The day where the illustrious honour roll will most likely have a 10th different champion added. And maybe one of the most talented sporting families on the planet will have to find space at home for yet another coveted trophy, one way or the other. It is Super Sunday at Sentosa Golf Club and we are delighted to be here for the final round of the HSBC Women's World Championship. Kate Burton alongside me, Ali Whitaker, And Ali, everybody is playing for this magnificent trophy, but it's Nelly Corder who is the closest player to it. That slender one-shot lead she has going into today's round. And wouldn't it be a story if she did, matching the history made by Annika Sorensen and Charlotta Sorensen back in 2000, the only two sisters ever to win on tour. Coincidentally, they did it in consecutive weeks as well. So that's what we're looking at here with Jess winning last week. It would be pretty fun. It'd be a great story. And to think that she is just 19 years old. They are making headlines, the Corders. We know about the whole family, how successful they are. And um, Nelly said last night, mm, I am a little bit nervous. I will have a chat with my parents. What kind of conversation do you think they would have had? Um, I know you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't listening in creepily on the phone. But I will say that Nelly's the kind of girl that she's just going to take it in a stride. She knows that if she keeps putting herself in this position like she did last week, she shot 65 on day three last week and just fell by the wayside sh shooting level par on the final round. So the more time she puts herself there, the more comfortable she'll get. And eventually she's going to win. She's just that talented. So good, so long and just impressing everybody, all the galleries of which there are significant people coming through the gates this morning. It's going to be a really interesting final day. But the contenders, Danielle Kang goes into the final round, one shot off the pace won a major championship last year and winning is habit forming you want more of it she does and you know you, I think you could tell that it really sparked a fire for her winning the KP, KPMG women's PGA championship last year after 122 starts on tour so she might have to wait a little less for number two but realistically she's doing all the right things she's playing really aggressive golf as well she needs to keep doing that today that's key for her how do you fancy nine parts on the back nine that sounds pretty good to me oh, well that's what Brooke Henderson did uh, en route to putting herself in contention. She's a five-time winner on the LPGA Tour, always a threat, an explosive game. She is, and she's got a good record, tying for fourth here last year. And realistically, again, Brooke, she needs to hit more greens. She only hit 12 greens yesterday, so that's why part and parcel why she had less putts than the majority of the players. But that 65 was a bit of a statement yesterday, and I think she's definitely a player to watch. I will be surprised if the winner doesn't come from that final group. Mm, or potentially Minji Lee, but it is Nelly Corder who is nudging ever closer to her first win on the LPGA. Let's join commentary now with Peter Donegan. 
Well, Kate, if we have anything like we had last year with the drama of Inby Park's last round charge, we are in for a treat. Is it going to be the leader who will hang on, or are they going to mount a challenge and come from the clouds to capture this prestigious trophy in Singapore? All will unfold over the next four hours here at Sentosa Golf Club. And what a day we had yesterday. So many of the top players coming to the fore. And after they did, this is what it looked like at the end of round three. Nelly quarter the leader by one from Danielle Kang. And then a buffer for the two top players. Brooke Henderson and Minji Lee in a tie for third. Four back from the lead. Michelle Wee after a great third round. Jess quarter up there along with her little sister. Jin Young Ko came to the fore in days two and three. And Marina Alex is there at 10 under. Perhaps these players might be a little bit too far back, but perhaps someone can start a charge. And I can tell you there have been some charges coming. Will it come from the former world number one, Lydia Ko, or a pass winner in Hana Jang? It's hot, it's steamy, and Sandy McKenzie, I think the action's going to be hot too. The action will be hot, Pete, and I can tell you at the moment it's absolutely baking out here, very humid. Again, mostly cloudy, but we've got a lot of blue sky at the moment, so the sun is poking through. Top temperature of 31, humidity is up 88%, so it's going to be a tough day, but uh, what an exciting one. All the best players in the world are here, 19 of the top 20, and many of them are in contention for the title. Kate and Ali have joined me to look at the stars. And what a fabulous three ball we have here. Minji Lee playing her fifth event on the bounce. Michelle Wee looking for her first win since the US Open in 2014. And Jin Young Ko, a winner this year at the Australian Open. Two wins already in her young career on the LPGA Tour. And it's not often you can say a 20-year-old is the most experienced player in a group when it comes to winning. Brooke Henderson, five wins. Danielle Kang, just the one. And Nelly still looking for her maiden title on the LPGA. Can she do it today? So then, we've got a lot to look forward to. And in particular, we've got something to look forward to right here because this is the hot player on the golf course. Say Young Kim has been tearing this place apart. This is a second shot to the third hole. And setting up the possibility of another birdie, and that would take her to nine under par for the day, if you don't mind, through 12 holes. And so a course record is very much on the cards for Say Young Kim. There has been a lot happening, even apart from Say Young's brilliant round, so let's have a look at some of the moments that have mattered so far. A past champion, 2012, Angela Stanford. This her second shot to five. She started at four under, 11 shots back from the lead, but she's made significant inroads too. And Angela Stanford coming with a rush. Brooke Henderson after that dazzling back nine, four off the pace going into the final round, looking to close that gap. And that's the way to do it. The difference between her and the leader, just three shots. Michelle Wee's been pretty spectacular from the fairways, well over 70%, in fact, nearly 80% in greens and regulation. That makes putting easy. That was for Birdie on the second. Chella Choi has had a very good ball striking week. She co-leads the field in greens and regulation. Here she is with her third shot at five. She had one of those days where pars were the norm yesterday. But that would set up her fourth birdie of the day at the fifth hole. Well, Danielle Kang relinquished the lead yesterday, gifted it to Nelly Korda, but looking to make amends in this final round. Started with a par, and this approach at the second, a very good approach and a birdie for Danielle Kang. And the early move from the Canadian continued this morning after the birdie on one, past the pin on two. Not normally a place you'd want to be, but rolled that one in for two in a row, Brooke Henderson. So Young Kim, we've talked about the round that she's having, out in 29 and then playing the first, her 10th, 15 feet, not a problem. And she could not miss. It was a drop shot on the second hole for Marina Alex, so looking to make amends and put some red numbers on the card. That opportunity came at this fourth hole, the par three. Excellent two from Alex. On the par five, fifth hole, 490 yards today. Only an iron 
required from Charlie Hull. She'd made birdie on the fourth and then set this one up on the fifth. It got better by the second and she'd roll that in for eagle three under in two holes. And speaking of the fifth, the former world number one, Lydia Ko, nice little string put together for the great champion from New Zealand. Birdie two, birdie three, birdie four, and just about stone dead. And that was four birdies on the bounce for Lids. On the ninth hole, how about this for Angela Stanford? That putt was to go out in 29. Woo, talk about making a charge on the final day. Jin Young Ko also got the message. She started actually with an early bogey, but then she fought her way back into it, making a birdie on three. That the birdie next on four. So interestingly, with all these birdies going on behind them, the players at the top needed to make some of their own, and Danielle Kang was able to do that. A birdie at the second, then that one at the fourth, and she has now found herself at the top of the leaderboard. Here's another birdie chance for Sae Young Kim after that great approach at the third. This to go nine under par for the day through 12 holes. She might not only break the course record, she might shatter the course record, and dare we say it, Dare we say it, that number might be a possibility. That famous number of 60. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We're going to keep an eye on what's going on at the top of the leaderboard. Danielle Kang has picked up two and now leads by one. It's been a steady start from Nelly Corder. Pars all the way so far for the 19-year-old. Brooke Henderson's picked up a couple. What a charge from Angela Stanford. What a charge from Say Young Kim. And Charlie, Minji and Michelle haven't been left behind either. Jess Corder at even par, losing ground to the rest of the field. Danielle Kang, the 25-year-old from the United States, is the leader. The action already hot on the final day at Sentosa Golf Club in Singapore. Danielle Kang now playing her second shot at the 12th hole. This hole playing some 446 yards today, longer than the advertised yard on the scorecard, but the hole location is 30 on, so she can get it to release back there if she'd hit it on the green, and that's not gonna be that easy a bunker shot. Now let's check in with Jenny Shin, up ahead at 13, and another birdie. How would this be? Birdie 11, birdie 12, and birdie 13 after the shot she had to play to get there. And a chance now, if she can make a birdie coming down the stretch, she's only one back, Jenny Shin. One ninety four for Nelly. This is hanging right. She hasn't caught this at all, and it's going to stay out there. It's going to miss the green short. That sounded thin from the get go. Maybe a little off the heel as well. As somebody turned the calendar back to two thousand and twelve, just for the moment, Angela Stanford won in two thousand and twelve. <laughs> Jenny Shin could have won in two thousand and twelve. This is some Sunday. Need to land this about 155. Now this is better contact and it's also a pretty good line. It's just not quite rolling down that incline as quickly as it did the other day, but that's good enough. On the hardest hole on the golf course, Brooke Henderson will have a putt to potentially join the lead. Not to be outdone <laughs> is big sis, Jessica Corder. She's three under for the day. That'll help. Birdie there on 13. Made easy work of it as well. Nice colour coordination too from Jess. She's got the umbrella to match the blue <laughs> outfit today. 
Everything's working in sync. Just off the fairway, so that makes the task a little bit more difficult for Michelle. Plenty of sand to immediately cover, and then some more up at the green. Started that one out to the right. It's her shot she's been working on a lot over the off-season, trying to get a bit more of a draw back in the bag, just to have some more variety of shots in her long game. Anything just rolling past the entry point on that front right section would be good with the pin today. And she's going to hope that that rolled back down. It did. Still not a lot of green to work with. Up and down for birdie. There's that bunker again. Jin Young looking to avoid it. Seemed to be heading right. And a long way right, too. That is a pretty serious miscalculation. I think that's the only execution error we've seen in the last three yeah. events from Jin Young Ko. <laughs> she certainly didn't make many at Ku Yonga. Oh, no. Yeah, Daniel Kang certainly has her problems here. I didn't think I saw the ball run down. It has plugged in the very top of the bunker. This is quite a pivotal point here. Because as we get onto this back nine and we start running out of holes and this is a tough shot because a very difficult green to get it on. She's uh, gonna be the one foot in, one foot out. She's actually lucky it's not steeper than this because sometimes you actually can't get good enough footing in the top of these bunkers. She's really just gonna have to stick this in behind there'll be a massive sand come out with this and it's not bad if it keeps running it was a you know really very much a hit and hope when you get in that situation she's now covered in dirt so the rest of the round's going to be uncomfortable she might have a few dollars at the end of the day to make her feel a bit better about the whole thing all right, it's been a remarkable day for scoring. We've already spoken to Say Young Kim after her 62. And then the 2012 champion, Angela Stanford, the Texan. An unfortunate way to finish with a five. She also had a bogey at the 12th as well, but look at the end number. That's what counts, a 63. It was a simply magnificent performance from Angela, surely one of the best rounds of her life. And as we said, that's really saying something. Let's hear from her now. She's with Kate. Angela. Wow, how good was that? How enjoyable was it being out on the golf course today? That was fun. That was a lot of fun. You know, you don't have these days a lot in golf and um, I, it just, it was just so much fun. And I think I blacked out there for a little bit because I don't remember a whole lot, but um, I know I had a lot of wedges in my hands and, you know, I, I've been hitting the ball so good for two weeks and, and like golf, I mean, you'd like to think it's going to come together, but you never know. So, it was, it was a lot of fun. It certainly came together today. Let me refresh you then, because at one point you were seven under through six holes. And I'd love to get into your head, the head of Angela Stanford, that when you're having this amazing round, what are you thinking? You're like, oh, I'm thinking course record. I'm thinking low 60s. Um, no, I wasn't thinking that. I think starting the day, you just want to see how low you can go. But sometimes the course doesn't set up for that. And today I felt like it was setting up for that. And, and it was kind of fun to actually see it and then get to do it. Um, when I made the putt on nine, I thought, wow, I've, I've never shot 29 before. And I actually told my caddy on 10, I'm like, I've never done this before. And the bad thing about golf is we got to go play nine more holes. <laughs> and in this heat. Yeah, and he's like, no, that's good. Let's keep going. I'm like, no. So it was, and then we birdie 10. And I thought, you know, I think it's a good day to, to learn how to grow a little bit. And, and hopefully I'll be in this position more and, and not be nervous. So let's try to learn something today. And you nearly made an eagle on the 16th hole. Your playing partners, your Solheim Cup friends, Christy Kerr and Austin Ernst, must have been giving you rounds of applause. Yeah, Austin was great. She um, she gave me a clap for that one and she just kind of rolled with it. You know, you want playing partners and, and these kind of days to just kind of go with it and, and enjoy it with you. You know, you don't want anybody out there rooting against you or anything. So they were great. It was great. Um, so it was fun. 
Well, well played. A 63. You're on the front page of the leaderboard. Don't think it's going to be enough because there's some great yeah. golf going on. I but you day. must be very pleased. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having me. A magnificent round from Angela Stanford. Just one worse than her career low. 62 in the first round of the 2008 Safeway International. Nelly from long range. And three feet from there, Sandy, was a pretty good result. Sandy just standing a little bit too close to the players, so we'll get back to her in a moment. The putt for Charlie Hull at 14, and the body language and the body English gets it in from the English woman. And a bad stretch through 11 and 12, that tough corner of the golf course, but that gets one of them back. From elevation, <laughs> Jin Young Ko pitching back across the green. Classy. How good a scrambler is she? Well, this could be quite a turning point for Danielle Kang. It'd be a heck of an up and down if it went in. You are kidding. How good a par is that? If she lifts the trophy at the end of the day, we will talk about that par as much as any birdie she might make. <laughs> Pretty handy stuff. Trying to throw it way up in the air, Michelle Wee. And that is beautifully played. It's hard to see from the elevation of the TV towers, but she had to go on up and over the back edge of the green then. This is big for Brooke Henderson. Oh. We speak about scrambling. Brooke was second in scrambling in 2017. So she stays within one. Nelly looks as though she will be able to maintain her 16 underscore out of this very popular trap minji lee with not a lot of green to work with has come up with a little gem there's just going to be enough right to left in that on the way back we saw what the ball did when it came past the hole and that'll have her attention Good job, bud. Good par from Nelly, great par from Danielle Kang. And perhaps a little bit of a disappointing par for Brooke Henderson. Speaking of pars. Lydia drains one from eight feet and keeps herself in the hunt. Birdies have dried up for the moment, but we talked about the fact that they've come through a very difficult part of the golf course. How about that for an up and down from Michelle Wee? The American is now one off the lead. They're queuing up behind. Nelly and Danielle have it at present. Jenny Shin has emerged from nowhere. Michelle Wee continues to chip away. Brooke Henderson in the final group is eyeballing the two leaders. Lydia Ko is definitely close enough. We know what she can do. Jin Young Ko, we might draw a line under them, so that means we've got seven who can win it. What a Sunday this is turning out to be. Fairty returns with more laughs and more guests. David sits down with PGA Tour star Ricky Fowler, golf's most decorated major champion, 
Jack Nicholas, and 16-time Grand Slam doubles tennis champion Bob Bryan. Don't miss an all-new 30 Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Jenny Shin on this much shortened 14th hole today, only playing 281 yards. This second shot underway, and that'll leave her a great opportunity for a birdie. Jenny Shin will have a putt to get to 16 under par. Three birdies in her last three holes. She's on a run. And the man she took the golf club from, Jason Hamilton on the bag with his caddy of the year bib on from all of those years ago. He's had a couple of decent bags. Yanni Seng when she was unbeatable. Lydia when she was unbeatable. Marina Alex from off the green. Had a finish that she would have liked to replay at the end of Saturday. But the smile is back on Marina's face. She is having a pretty dreadful day though. You mentioned Jason Hamilton. He'll be back on the bag for Yanni. This is a, a temporary arrangement for Jenny Shin, although she might be begging <laughs> for something a little bit more concrete. The way she's playing today is going back on the bag of Yanni saying when they get back stateside. And Kate Burton has come back from the clubhouse after interviewing people who could only shoot nine or ten under par. <laughs> Hoping it might rub off on me. Wow, that was very impressive. Say Young Kim and Angela Stanford. Good chance here for Jessica Corder at the 14th. Hmm. It is extremely hot out there. Very wow. interesting position. She's in here off the tee, Nelly Corder. It's not long and it's way out to the right. Has 260 from there to get it to the green, just going with an iron, putting it down this right hand side. It opens the green up a little bit, so it's uh, going to be attempted a pitch and putt there. What a big day it is for Nelly Corder to have a share of the lead. So much at stake. Bit at stake with this putt, too, because Lydia can get within one. Maybe. Oh. I think we could safely give her that one. Two twenty eight for Danielle Kang. Awkward pin right behind the bunker. No width in this uh, depth in the screen, I should say, at all. safe side is to play it out to the right so you've got a clear look at the flag and it's exactly what she's doing. Yeah, smart play. You don't want to end up in that front bunker when it's a much easier option from the right side of the green. It's been very methodical all week, Danielle Kang. Charlie Hull for birdie at 15. Bingo! And that is back-to-back -back birdies for Charlie. She's probably run out of holes, but there's a lot of dollars and a lot of Rolex World ranking points up for grabs at the end of the day. Great drive down here by Brooke Henderson, and she too is not going to have a go at this really tight pin. Just put it out to the right-hand side and rely on a good up and down. Six years ago, Jenny Shin was on the verge of winning this tournament and Singapore's weather probably denied her. Well, she's got a chance of retribution six years later. She's come up with a hot streak, one of the best hot streaks, and that is saying something. 
And what makes this even hotter is the stretch on the golf course where she was able to produce it. At the 11th, hardest hole on the course today. Rolls it in for a birdie, and then there was more to come. The 12th, very difficult off the tee, and the approach is no picnic either. But this iron into the heart of the green, and another birdie for Shin. And then at the par five, she would have been expecting perhaps birdie, but she gave herself a very difficult third shot. Well, it should have been difficult. Not the way she was playing. And Jenny got up there and knocked in a third successive birdie. And now to make it four in a row. And for a share. This has been an unbelievable stretch from Jenny Shin. The hardest part of the golf course, and she is making it look as though she could do it with her eyes closed. Just in the edge of the rough for Nelly Corder. She's got about nearly 50 yards of the flag, taking the bunker very tight. It was actually a very awkward spot to be. She was a bit too far back to take the bunker out of play. How good are the pictures coming from our hard-working crew out there on the golf course? As Kate said, it's hot, and it's hot in more ways than one out there, Kate. Golf is sizzling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice trick, Chella. Try doing that again. Wow. Let's have another look at this. See the orange ball coming to land. They don't normally bounce towards the flag. <laughs> Take those when they come. Now she's staring at a legitimate birdie. How about that pin on 17? Back to the action with our leading group of 13 and a delicate little pitch for Brooke Henderson, but up and down, a distinct possibility. Pin sitting just on top of a ridge, right to left break in this. Oh. That awkward length. One behind. Needs to make that stay in touch. Up ahead on the 14th hole. Oh. Oh. Simply brilliant. And she's got six inches left for a share of the lead. How good is this day? It's, it's just getting better. It is a packed, congested leaderboard full of stars. This is one of them. She's a major champion, Danielle Kang. Clear shot at this green. Just got to get it uphill most of the way, get it running. Mm, a little too much. Again, a difficult little birdie putt there. I think that might have been as a reaction from Brooke Henderson's ball, which pulled up so quickly, and she gave it a little bit more, and now she's given herself an issue. Well, Chella's played the trick shot. Let's see if she can capitalise on it. <laughs> of course she can. Get on you. Well, that's the best bouncer that we've seen since some of the cricket matches that have gone on around the world. <laughs> and Chella looks and says, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take that one. 144 yards, and it was unconventional, but it was a two. How about this? We've got three leaders now. We're going to have four in a minute because Michelle Wee is going to go to 16 under. What's going to happen next? Who would know? This has been an extraordinary Sunday at Sentosa Golf Club in Singapore. I hope you're enjoying our final round coverage of the HSBC Women's World Championship of 2018. If you're not, you're pretty hard to please.
We've got three leaders at the moment. It's about to be four because Michelle Wee is within kick in birdie range to go to minus 16. Jin Young Ko has a birdie opportunity as well. Danielle Kang could just take the outright lead by herself. So it'll be a par for Danielle. And Nelly Corder has also made her par. Sixteen unders the mark. It's been the mark for a little while. But you wouldn't think it would be enough to win. That tap in for Michelle Wee elevates her into a share of the lead on 16 under par. It's been a long time since we entered the winner's circle. We have to go all the way back to 2014, four years ago. Another significant part. In the hole. Just not quite falling for Brooke Henderson in recent holes. It's now five pars in a row. She's had a few chances too. She's only one behind. And her distance on these last few holes will be a huge advantage. Minji. <laughs> Certainly giving the crowd something to cheer about. In GV, three under today, 14 under for the championship, so two back. And that will be a tap in birdie for Min Ji Lee to climb to within one of the lead. No wonder she doesn't want to stop playing. Where's the challenge going to come from? Somebody is going to walk away with the trophy this afternoon. And it's very hard to pick a winner. Minji Lee at minus 14 now. Jenny Shin at minus 16. Unlikely to be minus 17 after this, but she's done some remarkable things this week with the putter in hand. And wasn't that far off doing another one. That's a really good leave on a putt that was so fast. Playing with Hannah Jang. For fans of Hannah, she's two under for the day, 11 under for the week. Moved into second gear right when she needed to to up her game to stay in touch and she's doing exactly that the breeze is in their face here can you just update me i have no idea what's going on out here it's there's going to be about 15 people in this playoff that is going straight towards that big bunker on the left and it's sat right between them in the little lip in the middle sandy yeah, it's a little grassy up there too pete maybe another leader not quite Jin Young, five under for the round. Only one back with three holes to play. 281 is the distance for 14 today. Big high ball flight from Brook, and it's heading directly in the direction of the green, just to the right of that bunker. But I don't think it will have enough to get up there. It's just going to be nice uh, sitting in front of the green, a good position for an up and down. She got a fair bit of distance with that drive for Henderson. It's pin high. Trust it. There is plenty of, well, not plenty of breeze. It's just sort of gusting a little bit. Every now and then it's quite strong. It's just blowing up again now. It's coming directly into them. And then it drops down again. And very high ball flight from Danielle. And it's going to miss the... No, it's not. It's caught the very edge of the bunker, and it is in. Let's hope she pulls a bit of light on the one she had at 12. Yeah. 
We can't worry about that right now. All we can worry about is what we can about. Again, a bit of amateur psychology going on. Don't worry about what's happened. Worry about what we can control. If Lydia was going to win, she probably needed to make birdie here. And after finding the water, that might just about spell the end of her chances. Bear in mind that this young woman is in contention to win the title after shooting 73 on Friday. Yes, what a great bounce back for Michelle Weaver. That's going to be a slick putt we saw just a few moments ago with Danielle Kang. Such a hard pin to get close. Minimise the damage is what Lydia is looking at and she might be able to she might be able to get away with a six which is about the best possible result that she could have hoped for but that will drop her down to 13 under par and three behind as we're getting to the pointy end of this championship heading in the wrong direction wrong with that from Minji Lee. She continues to stay in touch. If that putt falls, she's definitely in the discussion. Green's getting so quick, 11.8, and they look like they're getting even more slippery. Wow, it is tough, it is hot, and it is a challenge for the very best. But look at the players pecking away at the lead. Jin Young Ko, Lydia Ko. We have a four-way tie at the top on 16 under par. Shin, We, Korda, and Kang. We're in Singapore, it's anyone's game. Now this is not your easy bunker shot. The ball is actually laying very well. She caught the very edge of the corner, but it did run down into the bunker. 35 to the front of the green, but it's sitting in this little front area and there's not a lot of room. And it's a dome-shaped green, so if you don't get the right line here, it runs off in every direction. So awkward length long bunker shot to a difficult pin. the discussion that went on between player and caddy trying to keep her focused not let her mind wander to things that have already happened in the day Contact is okay, but it's going to come up way short. And that does make a little bit of a game changer here. Now it requires a very good up and down not to drop one. Something she's been pretty adept at so far this week. But when you get to the last handful of holes on a Sunday, the pressure level indicator is multiplied. of them. Jenny Shin, so close in 2012, maybe six years down the track, the trophy might be hers. She's come from nowhere. 
Michelle Wee, 73 on Friday. She's probably thinking this one might be beyond me. Well, that's not the case. For Nelly, the 19-year-old, the victory still beckons. It hasn't been her brilliant day yet, but she's still up there at the top. Danielle Kang has faced adversity a couple of times late on Saturday throughout the round on Sunday, and she's been able to conquer it. She's going to need to conquer it here at 14, and that's where we are with our joint leader, Nelly Corder. Quite a heavy lie here for Nelly. 40 yards to the flag. Yeah, that's not going to get there. I don't think it'll make the front of the green. Ooh. I can't believe just how difficult that shot was with it being an upturned saucer. You land on that upslope, takes all the sting out of it. Anything too punchy will roll off the other side. Oh, this is fast. That very good weight of putt from Jin Young Ko. Opportunity for here for Brooke Henderson to knock this close, but not a lot of room. Oh, that's got to stop. And therein lies the difficulty. Trying to zero in on this pad. pin flag is very hard. Ali Whittaker has rejoined us in the commentary box after sitting up the back for about 15 or 20 minutes with a calculator, with a computer, and trying to work out who's going to win this thing. <laughs> well, what I did find out is that the top 11 right now are 161 under par combined, <laughs> and 53 of that is today. That's how good the golf is. Wow. Duke University education once again. But that, those are mesmerizing scores. To think that we interviewed two players a few moments ago, but oh, as Lydia drops two shots to be out of the reckoning now, her chances evaporated on the 16th. Very important shot here for Danielle Kang. It's still very difficult, this her third. Trying to check it up. It's a pretty good effort. Still got a little bit of work in it. She's been ice cool under pressure when she's been asked to do something to scramble. Most of the time this week, apart from those two bogeys at the end of Saturday, she's been able to do it. Nelly Corder. Well, the one thing is, Kate, it is coming uphill. Still not easy on this green. I just want to know off the top of your head, you're full of information in there. What is the biggest number in a playoff we've had? In this championship, it would have to go back to 2012. And yeah, we had four, four in 2012. We'll delve into the record books. Oh, nice roll. Just sneaks by. I remember doing the one that when Jess caught a one that was six in the Australian Ladies Open. It certainly was. That's, we've just been scribbling that number down. Australian Open at Royal Melbourne where Jessica caught a one. The first LPGA Tour event. I have nightmare memories of being the on-course commentator for that six-way <laughs> playoff. <laughs> Needed to be twins. <laughs> Just a par for Nelly and looking likely to be the same for Danielle. Chance for the lead, albeit an outside one for Michelle Wee. It had a chance. Mind you, everyone seems to have a chance on Sunday. Yeah, don't blink for a moment because everybody who's got a putt for birdie has a chance to take the lead. Now might be a good chance to tell you that the playoff, which is seeming increasingly likely, is 18, 18, then they'll go to 12, then 18, then 12, then 18 again. Could be here for a while. Oh, it certainly could. 
be a nail-biting finish no matter what. But this, a chance for Henderson to join the leaders on 16 under. Oh, that was close. That was a good putt. To keep her hopes alive. Not out of the question yet, but it would have been a whole lot easier had that gone in. Solid. She has been all week, remains calm and composed. Just. <laughs> Not sure what's going on inside, but she has a share of the lead on 16 under par. Three holes to play. I think there's a bit of duck action going yes. on with the players at the moment. Everything looks serene on top of the water. Underneath, they're paddling like heck. Well, it's a championship that everybody would love on their resume. You look at the quality of the field that teed it up at the beginning of the week. 19 out of 20 on the Rolex rankings were here. And the quality of the names already on the trophy too. It's the elite. Pars all round then. When they would have been thinking birdie when they stood on the tee. And now they go to the beanbag hole, the 15, but there'll be no time for relaxing. <laughs> Brooke Henderson tackling the 15th hole, playing 160 yards today. Only six yards of green to work with at the front. Got to try and get this to stop quick. Just hasn't been able to hold putts of that length, though. In recent holes, she's now put together a string of six consecutive pars. But Brooks had her chances. Maybe that might be the one to break the string. Trying to capture the moment. Again, this slight cross breeze. There's not a lot of breeze out here, Pete, at the moment. It's just nice enough to stop us from baking. But it is coming right to left across this fairway. Just a little bit of noise behind the tee. Solid contact just to the right of the flag again, but should be okay. Just sneak on, it does. Well, there's what we said. You have to land it on the apron to get it into a position where you have the best putt at the hole. Uh, yeah. Good swing. Good swing, it was. <laughs> Struggling for part of it. Come on. The chance of a birdie coming for a couple in our final group. Jenny Shin has also got a birdie chance coming at the 16th hole. It's a four-way tie at the top at the moment at the HSBC Women's World Championship. Leaderboard is really tightly packed here in Singapore at the HSBC Women's World Championship. Nelly Corder now on this 15th hole has a great opportunity to start to separate herself and has this for the lead.
That was close. Something has to drop sometime for her. And another part for the outright lead, this time from Jenny Shin. This is incredible. Where has she come from? Eight under par from the round. Look at that. That back nine is crazy stuff. Eight under in the last 11 holes. It's what you've got to do if you want to hoist that trophy. She just shook her head there. I don't think she can believe what's going on. <laughs> Nelly Quarter, by the way, has tapped in and made her par. Jenny Shin leads the HSBC Women's World Championship. And back on the other side of the pond, you have to wonder if they could hear the cheers from 16. Oh, trust me, they could hear. <laughs> They're very aware. Everybody had a look. This for Brooke is downhill. Quite a quick putt. Yes. Something's got to start dropping soon for the Canadian. Now that Jenny Shin has been able to do what she's done, Brooke finds herself two shots adrift of the lead. She's got a par five to come. She's incredibly long. She'll be thinking birdie, and she'll have to. This may very well be one of the best days of golf combined that I've ever seen. And you've seen a lot. <laughs> I've seen I've seen my fair share. The course averaging just over 69 and a half shots at the moment. I've been around slightly longer than you. I don't know whether you picked that up or not, but I'd concur. This is remarkable. And I can tell you from ground level, it has been quite extraordinary. And I'm only watching one group. smile is masking what's going on inside her head. It's a game of millimetres and that could have been the difference. So what that means for the time being at least is that Jenny Shin with two holes to play is going to have and maintain the outright lead. Pin today only four paces off the left on 16. But it doesn't bother the world's best. going to need a minor miracle now even if that goes in Minji Lee let's pay due attention to the performance of this young lady for birdie at the final hole a tire titical at 15 years of age is in all likelihood going to finish in the top 10 remember that name you're going to be hearing it a lot 
following in the footsteps of Portanong Patlam and Area and Moria Jutanagan. Thailand's got another star. He's our leader. Where's that going? That's what we call on to a, a bailout. And there's a big one there on 17. Jenishin turns to Jason Hamilton and says, you haven't got a telescope in the bag, have you? Because I think I'm going to need it from there. What's the yardage? Come on down. Jenny Shin might get some company. This is a hole where these players know they seriously need to make a birdie on this par five. Nice looking tee shot from Nelly Corder. She was one of the only players to get anywhere near the front of the green yesterday. She did that. It's only about three paces short in two. This is almost last chance for Brooke Henderson now. It is a big chance for her here, Pete. She's very long, Brooke Henderson gets out a long way. She needs a good drive here. Oh, this is coming down the right-hand side. That is not ideal. It just puts you much further away. And uh, doubtfully it will be, she might be able to get home from there. Well, we're now at the stage, Sandy, where we think it's got to be birdie for Brooke here, otherwise it's too much. Yeah, I think it's definitely a must. And just as we're talking, the just breeze is just breeze is springing up into their faces again, and it's you know, a little bit of strength in it as well. So it's directly into them, not helping with this par five that you really need to birdie. Oh, this is way right from Danielle Kang. Wow, this is missed the cart pass on the right, and that's a long way from home. She's been pretty good at hitting the card path today. Yeah, missed that one. Very late with the hands then, trying to turn it over on that right-hand yeah. side. Right at the moment, it's advantage Michelle Wee. Jenny Shin is definitely in three-putt territory. She's going to have to come up with something extraordinarily talented to make a par at 17. Maybe Michelle is just on the charge. We've got a very exciting race going on here in Singapore and the year-long race to the CME Globe has only just begun. And two of our winners in Brittany Linsicum and Jin Young Ko uh, tied at the top of the race. Jess Corder's got a win on the board, but because Brittany and Jin Young have had other good results, they are the leaders in the race. Lexi Thompson, well, she was able to win it last year. Moria Jutanagan right up near the top, and it will go on all the way through the year until we get to Florida at the end of 2018. And here is one of the joint leaders in the race to the CME Globe, Jin Young Ko. This needs to go in. She's not done and dusted just yet because of where Jenny Shin is. And where Jenny Shin is, is in three putt territory. Trying to do the math on how long and how far away from the hole she is. It's in excess of 70 feet. Brilliant. That is superb. We talk about birdies, but that par and that putt in particular for Jenny Shin, we think back to the one on 12 for Danielle Kang. They can be the hinge points. Well, remember the putt that Inby held 12 months ago when Area had put it in tight and Inby 
putted it into the hole. Jenny Shin didn't put it in the hole there, but that might turn out to be equally as important. She maintains her lead by one, and she's got one to play. But she might have some company in a moment. Oh, no. You won't see many better opportunities than that. A right to left putt for a right-handed golfer inside seven feet. And it goes begging for Michelle Wee. The par three 17th and the par four 18th to come for Michelle. It's still going to take a bit of a miracle, but on this day, anything is possible. Birdie, birdie finish. Yeah. It's doable. Three hundred yards to green, so this is only a nine to get it back into play and give herself a chance at knocking one close. Pins over on the left. So it's not a bad angle to come in for Brooke. From Long on 18. Given the day we're having, <laughs> oh, we wouldn't normally count her out. Still 270 for Nelly, and she's putting it down the right-hand side. She'll only be about probably 50 yards from the front of the green, so it just gives herself a good chance for an up and down. Yeah, ditto, Sandy. A good approach angle, too, being down the right-hand side. Good. Ball's in the air for Minji Lee at 17. She's giving it the good stare. That might be that. She took dead aim at that. Yeah. That was why she was staring it down, just hoping it was going to be long enough to clear the traps. Not a shot that sets up that well for Michelle with her natural fade, the pin on the left. Yep. A long way away. Yep. Bruce is straight into it. 144 yards today. So the situation with Jin Young Ko is if she finishes birdie birdie, she might win, she might get herself into a playoff, but the likelihood is, well, she's going to have to make at least one. Potentially both of them. She's giving it the stare. With the water behind the hole as well, it is hard to get it all the way back there. Jenny Shin then is approaching the 18th hole and she does that with a one shot advantage. Michelle Wee outside of comfortable birdie range here at 17. Still the title very much up for grabs in Singapore. You're watching our final round coverage of the HSBC Women's World Championship of 2018. trophy has some of the greatest names the game has ever seen on it. Lorena Ochoa, the first winner. 
the world number one from Korea, Ji Shin, the legendary Kari Webb, and Inby Park is the only one with her name on the trophy on a couple of occasions. Jenny Shin came so close to getting her name on the trophy six years ago, and now she's one hole away from doing that. Confidently swung down that left side. And Jenny Shin's going to have a great angle into that whole location on the front right today. Job one done. Nelly Corder's turn. This is just a little punch in here. This needs to be close and it is going to be close. She's going to give us a really good chance at birdie in this hole and join the lead. Well, how interesting would it be on a day where nothing much has happened for Nelly Corder that the switch gets flicked 16, 17 and 18? A par at best then for Minji, which will mean she'll be minus 15. And that will not get it done in all likelihood. Yeah, and we've got a very large leaderboard sitting at this uh, behind the screen and they've all had a good look and everybody knows exactly the situation for Daniel Kang. The situation is it would be really beneficial if this went in. One behind. But it is long range, difficult part, not an easy green. Danielle, a known leaderboard, uh, leaderboard watcher as well. Michelle Wee, not so much. Outside chance of taking a share of the lead from long range. And that's going to have a little bit in it coming back too. The US Open champion of 2014. Here's a major champion in her own right at just 20 years of age, Brooke Henderson. If she's going to lift the trophy, this has to go in. Not a bad angle to come in from P2. She's coming up the hill. It is a very makeable distance. Does run away a little bit quickly past the hole though, but we hope it doesn't go there. Oh. She's come so close so many times today. She's held very little but had a lot of really good putts and uh, just has not quite had the line today. That's eight times now in the last eight holes where she's had a birdie putt. And as Sandy said, nothing has fallen. The equation becoming pretty simple for Brooke. Birdie, birdie finish needed. But here's the putt that might change everything. Nelly Corder four pars to begin with she made a birdie at the fifth then she went pars again until she got to nine where she made a bogey got it back at ten it's been pars since then a nearly day we called it earlier now would be a good time to change that she has played very solid she's very impressive and when there's been just booties going off everywhere she's been unlucky Another one shaves by. One of those days for her where it could have been very different. This may be the biggest shot she's ever played.
There's a glimmer of hope for those at 16 under par. This woman, Danielle Kang, one of those three players. This, though, would need to go in. to lose count of the number of times she has two putted from long range this week. This is hard part. <laughs> well, what is it? Driver four iron, five iron? <laughs> What's going on? Ah. <laughs> One back, two to play. You wouldn't rule it out yet for Jin young Ko if she can make par here, but that's only because of what we've seen with Jenny Shin at the last. 16 may get it done. You can bet her caddy, Dean Hurden, will be saying, come on, let's pick up one more on 18. Let's finish in style and then control what you can. Jin Young's not been able to make a birdie on 18 yet this week. That's a good save. Huge. Absolutely huge from Michelle Wheat. And she's still in with a chance. Jenny Shin has it at the moment. But what she also has is her difficulties at the final hole. She's got an awkward little pitch from near the front bunker. She needs to make par and put the pressure on the Americans. Michelle Wee, Nellie Corder, Danielle Kang, and maybe Minji, Jin Young and Brooke are not out of it just yet either. Finish in now from off the green at the 18th. This is her third shot. Has a one-shot lead. Ooh. And she got away with that. She's on the green, but she's going to have a tough putt to save her par. going to be brave in amongst this group with this tight back left. Nelly is not. She's going to be short. She's going to be right. It's safe. Uh, not what she's looking for in these closing stages. Although, Sandy, because of what has happened at 18, and she doesn't know what's happened at 18, a par might be good enough. That might be the commercial play. Michelle, we watching this one closely. And she's not going to get that kick right. That's going to stay up in the second cut of rough. Breezes into the, the line's okay. It ain't, won't be too bad. Well, she can hold that, she's definitely in it. Yeah, this 
That would have looked very good from the tee. Just not quite the right club. She went for it. Yeah. As will Jin Young Ko. Not a lot wrong with that golf swing. It doesn't look like it's a golf swing that is going to break down under pressure anytime soon. Such beautiful acceleration through the ball. Incredible tempo, Jin Young Ko. She's just going to find herself on that right side of the fairway on a bit of a downslope. We've seen over previous days that it's an awkward second shot in. No easy pin placements at 18. As Jenny Shin is finding out. So this putt is for par. This to stay at 17 under. This to maintain the cushion she's got over the rest of the field. The win is not out of the question if this doesn't go in. But if it does, it'll bring her heart rate down about 20 beats per minute very quickly. under it will be then and what that effectively means is we have right now four joint leaders and it's going to be a very uncomfortable wait for Jenny Shin good from that distance Bearing in mind what's gone on, and she is not aware of what has gone on at 18. A par will be good enough for the time being, and then steal yourself and see if you can pick up your third birdie of the day at 18. We'll go back to the putting action at 17 shortly. Hasn't been the best of weekends for Marina Alex. Put herself right in contention through 36 holes. Just couldn't quite bring it home. I can't help thinking, Ali, that your words proved prophetic when she missed that putt of 15 yesterday and you said it's very hard to get that out of your head and it seemed to affect her on the way in and maybe that carried through a little bit into Sunday. As Danielle Kang stands over what is a really difficult part here, she's just got over this bunker and there's quite a ridge in front of her. It's not an easy part to make. They still have not changed the leaderboard behind, so the players are totally unaware of what's happened on 18. Good enough from that range. The reason they haven't changed the leaderboard, of course, is because Jenny Shin hasn't putted in yet. But we know that it's going to be a five at best. Par for Jess Quarter, and now it's going to be an anxious wait for her, not to see whether she wins or not, to see whether her little sister wins or not. 70 to close. Very good after last week and all the emotion and the effort that went into that. at the last will it be enough first bogey of the day at a bad time but there is still hope as there is for Brooke Henderson
she might have had one or two hit the lip, but for the most part, they haven't really been as close as she would have liked them to be, all of these birdie opportunities. Big shot for Michelle Wheat. Can afford to fade it in. This one hanging out a little bit. And hanging short. That is a real miscalculation in a critical moment. All right, then the equation simple for Brooke Henderson. Hold this, and then you have to make birdie at the last. It might not be enough anyway, but it gives her a little hope if she can make three at the final hole. As it stands, still four leaders. One's finished, one's playing the 18th, two are about to play the 18th. Eighteen, then eighteen, then twelve, then eighteen if required. Jenny Shin, Michelle Wee, Nelly Corner, Danielle Kang, 16 under. And Danielle Kang just took a very long look at that leaderboard. Minji Lee, second shot at 18 on the way, needs a birdie to get into that four-way tie at the top of the leaderboard. And that is a great opportunity for her. It's a good way to spend the time momentarily just to keep your mind off what's going on. Must be so many thoughts spinning through her mind. Look at the serenity of that scene in the background. It's in heavy contrast to what we've seen on the golf course today. If it goes in, she leads. back to that moment at the US Open Championship in 2014 when she was crowned. And that reaction is on a par. Incredible. It was shades of Paula's reaction. Doesn't this tournament just come up with some phenomenal moments? And now Jenny Shin knows that victory will not be hers. But it yeah. still could be Nelly. It still could be Danielle. Yeah, go get some, get some 
come right okay, back. Okay, okay, sure. Two left in it who can do something about it. She must keep this high on the left hand side. And she's doing that. Nice tail breeze behind these players. So part A of the equation out of the way for Nelly Corder. You can safely say that's centre of the fairway. And she needs it right now. Jin Young Ko. It won't be a victory, but she's already got one of those this year. She had one at the end of last year. And she finishes at minus 15. Good solid contact by Brooke Henderson. And again, this one's going to split the fairway. Let's hear what they know. Something happened down there. It was a heck of a roar up on the green. Yeah, it wasn't just something, Sandy. It was something incredible. And so Brooke Henderson needs to hold her second shot to have any say in it. Minji knows her fate is decided. And she too will finish at 15 under par, just as her playing companion Jin Young Ko does. Another good week for the Australian. She's been in rare form at the start of 2018. Not the victory today though. What a moment for Michelle Wee. Well done, Michelle. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Just wait for the 26-year-old to see what happens behind her now. But here's a moment that she will be replaying over and over in her mind. I thought she was almost going to do the Paula Crema sprint there for a minute, and you wouldn't blame her if she did. That's... Moments like those are rare, but this championship has had its fair share of them. She's not there just yet. She hasn't got her name on the trophy just yet. Nellie Corder and Danny Kang can do something about it. They're on the final hole. Daniel Kang needs a birdie at this last hole to tie her good friend, Michelle Wee. Going to be hard to get close from that first cut of rough. But she has a chance. Is the only other one who can do something about it. Good drive from Nelly here. Just 128 to get it to the flag. But again, you can see how difficult the ball is to stop on this green. So need to land it short of the pin. Pin is only on 11. Breeze behind. And that is a little further right, but it might be OK. Got a good kick. not entertained. <laughs> How about that big deep sigh from Nelly? Thinking it's been one of those days when nothing really has caught fire at any stage. And maybe she's changed it at the most appropriate moment. She'll have that putt to get into a playoff. 
Danielle Kang will have a much more difficult putt to get into a playoff. And so the instruction from Sister Brittany will be very simple to Brooke now. Hold it. She's given herself the best dog possible chance. She's hit this over 300 yards off the tee. Just 90 yards to the front. Contact is good, it's got to stop. Oh, and it does. It's been a great week for Brooke Henderson. Unfortunately, it will fall just a little bit short. But at 20 years of age, there are many more wins in store for this young woman. Well, 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 the drama continues. How good are these players? Let's hear it for Nelly Corda, an emerging star on the LPGA, major champion Daniel Kang, and five-time winner on the LPGA Tour from Canada, Brooke Henderson. And you just heard something out on the course there, Ali. Brooke looked at Brittany and said, let's make this for second. Fighting till the end. If you are just coming in, you have missed one of the more extraordinary days of women's golf that we've seen in quite a while. But the situation is this. Michelle Wee has held a putt from off the green at 18 to get it to 17 under. Both this young woman, the 25-year-old from the United States, Danielle Kang, and her 19-year-old compatriot, Nellie Corder, have putts to force a playoff. Otherwise, Michelle Wee has career victory number five. Her last one was in the US Open in 2014. Of the two, Unquestionably, Nelly's putt is the more makeable. Of course, Daniel Kang is still in here with a chance, as much as it is a very difficult green, but it is makeable. Should be a little bit of left to right swing from where she is, or probably quite a lot of left to right swing. Day is coming up the hill because it does run from front to back this green, but she could also put herself right in the mix again. Two days ago, she went around this place in 64 and equaled Inby Park's tournament record. She was flawless for 50 holes, not a bogey on the card until late yesterday. This putt for birdie. And this to force a playoff. No! said let's get it in for second it may in fact be for third depending on what Nelly does in a moment but one way or the other it's been a really strong performance from the young Canadian
16 under, Brooke Henderson falls one short. Blemish free in the final round, so many chances along the way. So it all comes down to this. She comes from an incredible sporting family. Let's see if she can draw on those bloodlines, and that pedigree. To force a playoff. Michelle Wee has her fifth career victory. A hug from her mother. An incredible way to do it. Tears of joy and relief at the same time. Oh, thank you. Oh. Yet again, this tournament has produced an incredible moment. Nelly Corda knocks it in for par at the final hole and finishes at minus 16. A round of 71, like Brooke Henderson. Opportunities along the way, but she just couldn't convert them. Agreed, man. <laughs> we've got a worthy champion, and not only that, we've got another HSBC moment that we're never going to forget. 1,355 days since her last victory. Michelle Wee at this event, which springboarded her year in 2017, as we watch her best friend finish out. but still a fitting end to the week for Danielle Kang. Brilliance was needed and 70 today just wasn't enough. And if it wasn't going to be her, she'll be the happiest that she can be that it was Michelle Wee. What an exceptional conclusion it turned out to be. Jenny Shin coming from nowhere. <laughs> Marina Alex amongst the first to congratulate the champion. <laughs> and there's Jess, best friend and big sis. A consoling arm. And no doubt saying, well, you didn't win, but you should be proud of yourself what you've done at 19 years of age. And at 20 years of age, Brooke Henderson just behind her. There's the future right there. And how often have they said that about Michelle Wee in her golfing journey. There's the future right there. And all of the things that were placed on her shoulders. 12 months ago, she led the field into the final round and everybody thought she might win the HSBC tournament then. It took another 12 months, but boy, that was worth the wait. And then some. You'd wait a decade for that finish. Thankfully, we haven't had to since the finish with Paula Kramer in 2014. There is something about this event that produces the exceptional. And that's exactly what Michelle Wee produced on the final hole. An exceptional 65, an exceptional 65th shot for the day. Takes Michelle Wee to victory. Jenny Shin also had a 65, but unfortunately for her, it was a bogey at the last that would cost her any chance of holding up the trophy. Nelly Corder, Danielle Kang and Brooke Henderson, magnificent in their efforts, just one shot back. Minji Lee and Jin Young Ko, at 15 under.
Well worth another look. The moment of the week. I wonder what chance she gave herself of holding that. It was so difficult. The 18th has been so difficult all the way throughout the week. Only five people today were able to make birdie at the last, and Michelle was one of them. How good is that reaction? So she adds a victory to those at the Lorena Ochoa Invitational in 2009, the Canadian Open in 2010, the Lotte Championship in 2014, and that US Open Championship in 2014 as well. What a day for Michelle Wee. Fantastic part there on the 18th hole to claim this championship. But what it does do is it moves her to second in the race to the CME Globe, just there behind Jin Young Ko. But a whole host of players right there chasing her down. Brittany Lincecum, Jessica and Nelly Corder also had a fantastic day today. And we're going to go out to the presentation. Kate Burton will be hosting. nail-biting finish once again this championship delivers and this is the 11th staging of the HSBC Women's World Championship and we are delighted to have the support of HSBC so it's only fitting that we hear now from the Chief Executive Officer Tony Cripps to say a few words. Thank you and ladies and gentlemen good afternoon well over the past four days we've witnessed um, the very best of golf and of course today's exhilarating playoff right down to the wire between Michelle and Danielle, Nelly Corder and Jenny Shin. Couldn't have been more exciting. And it's truly a fitting close to the championship that has now earned the reputation as Asia's major. This year is a special for the tournament as we presented its new name, the HSBC Women's World Championship. The powerhouse lineup that took to the field the past four days just reinforced how apt this is. We had an all-star field, including the world's top 10 ranked players, world-class greens here at the Sentosa Golf Club, Tanjong course, and of course, thousands of enthusiastic fans. So on behalf of all of us at HSBC, thank you to all the fans for supporting this premier golf tournament. HSBC's Women's World Championship 2018 um, has what many will say is the best field that's ever been assembled for any professional run golf tournament here in Singapore. So I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to all the players. Your talent and professionalism is truly remarkable. And it is with admiration that I now offer my congratulation to not just one, but of course, but three runners up, Danielle Kang, Nelly Corder and Jenny Shin right down to the wire. The skill and sportsmanship that you have shown over the past four days contributes to making this tournament such a huge success, so, so many thanks. And to our champion, Michelle Wee, what an outstanding performance. Watching you play over the course of the tournament has been a real pleasure, and it is an honour to call you our 2018 HSBC Women's World Champion. Please. <laughs> As I said, the calibre of the field this year is one of the most competitive in the LPGA Tour calendar, and your victory, of course, is no easy feat. We began our sponsorship here over 11 years ago, uh, and this tournament supports our ambition to open the world of golf to a wider audience. Today, the HSBC Women's World Championship is a highlight in the sporting calendar, and we're extremely proud of what it has become. 
It is HSBC's pleasure to host the HSBC Women's World Championship here, here at the Tanjong course. So a big thank you to Andy Johnson and his team at Sentosa Golf Club for their hard work in ensuring the course and facilities were ready to provide a truly memorable experience to the golfers and to the fans. Thank you to our long-term partner IMG, co-sponsors and the many volunteers who have made this tournament such a huge success. And of course, lastly, to the thousands of fans, your enthusiasm infused the start of 2018 with this great energy for this tournament. And I hope you are as thrilled as we were to see the best women golfers compete at the HSBC Women's World Championship. Many thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Tony. And I think it's only fitting now we hear from our champion. So Michelle, come over, let's have a chat. I mean, they're in the way of your putt here. Oh, just looking. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. What an emotional victory. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I, I don't know what's going on right now still. <laughs> My head's running at a million miles an hour. I don't think there was a person here around the 18th, and sure, for all the millions of people watching at home, that didn't leap out of their seat when they saw that putt go in. I was definitely not leaving it short, that's for sure. Now, you started the day five back. Did you think you had a realistic chance of winning? Um, you know, I wanted to. I wanted really badly to win, especially what happened last year. You know, I kind of had some unfinished finish here. Um, and I just knew I, if I shot, you know, seven, eight under, I'd have a chance. And that was my one and only goal. But the scoring was good. There were players coming in. We had 62s earlier, 63. So you knew the score was there for the taking. But given what was at stake, how proud of you of what you've just achieved? Uh, I'm so proud of me, my caddy, and my entire team. Um, it, it's, it's been a while since I stood up here, so it feels pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it feels great. Your last win you had was a major championship, the 2014 US Open. This must count very highly in your decorated career. Your fifth win now on the LPGA. Yes, for sure. Like you said, um, you know, we consider this to be Asia's major. Um, HSBC has just been such a great supporter of women's golf, and they always uh, have a world-class world event. And for me to win this event, um, it just means the world to me. And how did you cope with this heat? It's hot. I don't think I'm coping. <laughs> <laughs> You're glowing right now. You're a winner. Anybody else you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank HSBC, like I said, for hosting this tournament and um, supporting us for many, many years. Um, the Singapore Tourism Board, um, Singapore is definitely one of my favorite spots to be. Um, definitely go shopping today. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank Sentosa Development Corporation, Sentosa Golf Club, and all the co-sponsors, Rolex, Singapore Airlines, Rico, Fairmont, um, the LPGA's officials, um, IMG. Um, and volunteers in Marshall, I mean, it was not cool, cool out here. It was really warm, and for us to play it was difficult, so I can only imagine how difficult it was to volunteer, and I really appreciate the effort, and all the fans that stuck out here. Um, I, don't, I don't know how you guys watch golf in this heat, but thank you so much for supporting me all four days. Um, my family, my friends, my caddy, it was a great read on 18. <laughs> and my coach, David Ledbetter, um, and my sponsors, Nike, Callaway, Omega, and MGM, um, thank you for never stop believing in me. Um, this is a great moment, and this is a great moment for our family. Well, congratulations. Played like a champion and spoke like a champion as well, Michelle Wee. Well, if I can, please ask Tony to step forward and present Michelle with this magnificent trophy. It's a gentle task. But this is our champion in 2018, the HSBC Women's World Champion, Michelle Wee. And Tony, if we can have you on the other side, Michelle, please. Just present me. And in addition to winning the trophy, she will also win 225,000 US dollars for her efforts this week, and as well as a beautiful necklace, which is the Hibiscus Syriacus, the national flower of Korea. And that is the recognition of Imbi Park's efforts last year when she won this championship on the new Taejong course. But how about this for a fairy tale finish? nail-biting all the way to the very end, an enormous putt across the 18-3 for Michelle Wee's fifth win on tour. You were all part of it. You cheated her every step of the way. We are delighted that you could join us. Thank you very much for being here. Safe travels, and we look forward to seeing you again. 
What a memorable moment. What a great acceptance speech from Michelle. I think she is still in a state of shock, a state of disbelief. I think a few of us are. 28 years of age. That was memorable. That was brilliant. It was mesmerising. Those are the kind of moments that make the early tea times, the long flights, the blisters, the injuries that she's endured. Cast your minds back to the US Open last year when she was withdrawing with a sore neck. The emergency appendectomy last year, but it is all worthwhile. So it was worth the wait and so was the celebration. It's been a magnificent week here in Singapore. The Asian Swing, the early Asian Swing comes to an end. On behalf of our team, Peter Donegan saying farewell from the new Tanjong course at Sentosa Golf Club in Singapore. We hope you've enjoyed the 2018 edition of the HSBC Women's World Championship. And if I can slightly alter the words of the late and great Freddie Mercury, we is the champion.